Hi, this is Rob Almeida from G-Captain. I have here on my screen, this is Dr. Eleanor Kirtley from Glosson Associates. She's here to talk with us a little bit about the uh, new IMO requirements for energy efficiency. Uh, Ellie's a, basically our, our resident expert when it comes to this topic. Um, and uh, Ellie, why don't you just talk a little bit about what you're working on and, and a little bit about your background. All right. Thanks. Good morning, Rob. Um, my background is I'm an 04 mechanical engineering graduate from Tufts and then went on to Michigan for my PhD. Joined the Boston Associates in 2008. And since then, I've been involved with a SNAMI initiative. That's the Society of Naval Architects and Marine Engineers. Through their technology and research program, I am leading the MVP, the Marine Vessel Environmental Performance Assessment. This is mostly an equivalent to the LEED rating system for building things. We have a holistic checklist of environmental impacts from ships grouped into energy efficiency, air emissions, water emissions, and general measures. And we're currently in phase two, developing performance assessment guides, so both prescriptive measures on how to reduce your impact and also quantitative metrics. How do you measure your impact to see how well you're doing? Okay. Um, so that's the project that I somehow have become a technical expert <laughs> in. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Well, um, so the IMO came out with this new regulation uh, on the 15th, which is uh, basically their Marine Environment uh, Protection Committee, uh, and, they, and they passed mandatory measures to reduce emissions of greenhouse gases uh, within the industry. And uh, I know that the Carbon War Room over the past few years has been pushing real hard for uh, really in, uh, influencing industry on a global scale to uh, come up with new measures uh, for reducing their carbon footprint. Um, is this is this one of those measures that was pushed hard by the Carbon War Room, or is this, do, or do you have any idea who, like, where, what's the basis of this of this new this new measure? The metric is the EEDI, the Energy Efficiency Design Index. Um, this has been proposed by IMO starting a few years back. It's still somewhat under development, though the current incarnation is rather set. Um, it's basically looking at the emissions of the ship of the designed ship, uh, mm -hmm. divided by its service, provided by its capacity, um, transit speed. Um, and the Carbon War Room has picked up the EEBI, and they've calculated it, they've estimated the EEBI for the ships in the Lloyd's Fair Play database. Okay. So you can go to shippingefficiency.org and look up by IMO number or various other search parameters um, a vessel and see its EEBI score and then grouped into ranks of, I think, A through G. Right, where okay. Where the best. Okay. Now, yes. what, what are, so so basically, recap, it's, it's carbon emissions divided by the amount of cargo transported by a given ship. Um, does that take into account um, the route a ship takes or, like, how often it spends the time in port or, um, you know, like, how, how, do, how does a, what are some of maybe limitations that this, uh, this, this equation has? Well, it's very much a design index. It does not take into account the operation of the vessel. Okay. And so it's really just the initial starting condition for the ship. Um, if you're looking at how well it is then operated, you're needing to take up measures um, as prescribed by the SEEMP, the other initiative that was passed by the IMO MEPC, that all ships, existing ships, must have a ship energy efficiency management plan. And perhaps then you're looking at calculating your EEOI, your energy efficiency operation indicator. Okay, okay. So um, would say a... Uh, uh like a, a tanker vessels or a, or a container ship, would would they have their own set of like grouping, um, where you would be ranked accordingly to a type of ship, like or or in or say a, like a ferry a ferry vessel operating in a certain area, would that have its own sort of thing ranked with its peers, or would it be more or would it be yes. more of a blanket thing? So you're basically in a, in a sailing terms like PHRF, you know, you're not going to be, you know, you're you're going to rate yourself self based on the type of Yacht or, yacht or ship it is, you know. It's kind of yeah, what I'm, what... very good question. Um, basically, you want your EEBI to be lower than your competitor's EEBI. Right. So you're grouping the ships by ship type who are all providing a similar service. Um, the definition of the peer group of who are you being compared to mm -hmm. um, will probably still be under scrutiny. Um, there's been concerns that um, grouping all ship sizes in the same ship type with the same baseline, it's not fair to the larger ships. They may be more overly uh, 
lenient or more stringent to meet those percent reductions from that baseline if you group them together. Okay. Um, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Um, what about when it comes to uh, the way ships are being designed? You know, I, mean, I guess 30 years ago, these ship, ships were built with, with a lot more steel in them, you know, basically, and they're, they're lasting a lot longer. Um, and now you've got, you know, the lighter the ship, the more car, cargo we can carry, um, but you've got also fa- some factors in there when it comes to um, fatigue and whatnot. Is that a, um, how much is, is our naval architects like yourself, or, or you know, how, how much is industry changing? Are the rules sufficient, say, with, like, classification rules or CFRs? To, to deal with with fatigue issue is fatigue an issue or fatigue and corrosion or what what's going on there what are your thoughts there fatigue and corrosion would definitely come in through the SEEMP mm-hmm. um, and also through a few measures that are addressed in MVP the SNEMI initiative um, but simply through the EEDI that's just looking at installed horsepower okay. um, through your main machinery and auxiliary machineries um, that in itself is still a bit limited in terms of how it might be used for alternate propulsion systems. Right. Okay. So it is it is limited. Okay. Um, in in the, in the I guess over the past few months, uh, some people have mentioned uh, the EEDI as being a uh, um, a speed limit on the ocean. Uh, is that uh, is that fact or fiction? What, what's what's the what's the opinion there? I've not heard the vocabulary used of a speed limit. Well, well the, 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 what I'm trying to say is that the fa- obviously the faster a ship goes, the more more you know more more less efficient it is generally above a certain level. But um, you know the quicker the cargo gets there, you know there's there's give and take on that. But um, yes, there's been a lot of attention to slow steaming and being more efficient by just going slower. But I think definitely a careful study would have to be done by any operator to see if that's right for their fleet. Right. I mean, clearly, if you're going so slow that you need to introduce this another vessel into your fleet to carry the cargo between points B and B, then that extra, car- that extra cargo ship has more emissions. And so it's not quite that simple. Um, with respect to the EPDI, um, as opposed to most energy efficiency measures where you want to increase your efficiency, the EPDI, you actually want to lower it because it's looking at emissions. Um, but the speed, your velocity reference, is in the denominator. So a faster vessel is going to have a lower or better EEDI score. So that's a little counterintuitive when you want to, say, slow steaming will reduce my emissions. Right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so you've got this ranking of between, like, A and G or, or, or whatever it is. Um, <clears throat> say a vessel gets, uh, you know, it, it gets ranked a D or a C or something, and you got another ship that's ranked an A. What, at the end of the day, like, like what's the... What's the IMO going to do if you get a, if you get a sort of score of a D? I mean, what what are the what are the um, the ramifications? Have the, have has that been sorted out yet, or, or what are we? You know, just a slap not, the wrist? Is it yeah, money or it's what? Sorted out in terms of A through G rankings, mm-hmm. and that was I think that A through G rankings has been taken up by um, the Shipping Efficiency, the Carbon War Room Initiative, and also by Right Ship. Okay, um, is also using those rankings. What the IMO has just stipulated is that you need to have percent reductions from a baseline. It's not necessarily ranking you A through G. Okay. But I think they may be using the same peer groups of ship type that the A through G, A through G rates are based on. Okay. And in terms of ramifications, um, I think the verification process is still one of the challenges remaining ahead. That They have said that there's to be an intercessional meeting working group next March that I think is going to look at sort of what are the penalties for not compliance okay. and also on the other hand what sort of incentives can be offered for high performers. Um, this has sort of made a new call for ports and other stakeholders to really look at um, who are the leaders in the industry. Okay. Oh, interesting. Okay. And, and that and that will be an, an IMO uh, committee that will be handling that or is that going to be like a SNAMI thing or who, who, who's going to be handling that? Do you think? In terms of the regulations that were passed on Friday, I believe it's the MEPC working group that will be tasked okay. with, with an defining IMO. these verification procedures. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Well, great. Well, that's all the questions I have. Um, anything more to uh, Anything more to add? Sure. Um, <laughs> um, there's been a lot of attention paid to the fact that the EDI, the EDI just got regulated as being mandatory for new ships. Okay. Um, however, our current fleet of 70,000 ocean-going vessels are existing vessels, and they're the ones creating the emissions. 
Okay. So, to me, it's more important <clears throat> that the SBEMP became mandated. And though it's rather broad and rather prescriptive, um, it does give good starting point of guidance on how the existing vessels can reduce their impact. Okay. And that's most important for immediate reductions. Right. Some of the, uh, and that kind of goes to something I, I, I was talking with uh, some people at uh, Germantra Lloyd, they were, they were talking about uh, different types of, uh, of hull modifications to be done to ships that they can basically do with, with increase in, in processing power of, of, of computers these days. You can basically uh, mod, uh, model hull and run it through a, a VPP program and, and come up with different types of hull shapes to optimize hull, um, hull design. Um, I, I guess uh, how much of a push in, in the industry right now is, is, is that to uh, just to modify some of these new hull shapes and, and some of these some of these hulls and, and ships to, to make them more efficient is, is um, I guess, what's, what's your take on that? Is that still in the process of, of being figured out, or are people doing that, or what, what, what's going on there? I think any measure is on the table yeah. being looked at to improve a ship's efficiency. Um, I think with the further developing computing power that we have available for us, um, there's really exciting measures that we can take with computational fluid dynamics. Right. Um, for MVP, I've been in conversations with... Um, engineers from INSEAN in Italy, that they're writing our guidance on hull optimization. Yeah. Uh, basically looking at, for an existing ship, can you modify the bulbous bow? For a new ship, can you get an even more efficient hull form for a new strong? Um, yeah. There's more tools at our disposal. So yeah. the more modern ships that come out into the market, inherently they'll be more energy efficient. Right, right, right. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Well, great. Well, I appreciate, or Dr. Crowley, I appreciate your time, and uh, you know, definitely keep us posted on, on what you're up to, and if, uh, if you have any more comments, feel free to give me a call. Um, but that's it, and uh, for those of you watching, I appreciate you hanging in there with us, and um, more to follow. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Rob. We'll see you.